Do you know the squad looking after the other night? No, yeah, well, much the same. Uh, much the same, no changes. Um, I think I spoke before the game that we, we lost Callum Butcher really late before the game, so Callum will miss out. Um, and I think that uh, pretty much from, from where we are, a little bit barred and bruised as we can expect, but uh, no, there's no fresh injury concerns. Um, we're working really hard. We, we Andy Halliday's managed to get a, a couple of pitch sessions individually with, with the physio um, and, and you know the medical staff so just working away to try and see if we can get him back in as well um, this weekend in terms of starting the game etc is going to be too early unquestionable but um, no we want to get him back up to speed as quick as we possibly can and try and get him back on the pitch because I've said that a few times already he was uh, very influential for us I felt when he was when, when he was playing good to get Sir Nicholson it was game time and obviously gets his goal as well could be, could be an important player for you. Yeah, listen again, it's like it's that sort of hidden gem I feel that it's somebody that I knew when I brought Sam in that I was absolutely delighted to get him here, but we also realised that it was going to be a bit of time scale as to getting him up to speed. Uh, if I'm honest, I didn't think that we could get the minutes out of him that we did the other night, but I thought he looked really fresh and really sharp, especially in the second half. Um and you know, I just think you, you, you talk about kind of pros and guys that have been about the game he's experienced the game in different countries and, and I think you can just see that by how he manages the game he's got an unbelievable determination um, you know so aside from the quality finish that he has and the and, and the parts of build ups and goals that he has in the game then he's, he's a good footballer you know but he's, he's got a, a, an incredible determination um, probably part of that generation that you know worked so hard and has such a desire to play on the pitch um, but it was a big ask of him on Wednesday so again it's another thing that we're monitoring this weekend just to see and just you know there was a couple of changes to our team on Wednesday to try and keep us as fresh as we possibly we could be and make sure that we're ready try and start the game well which we didn't because we can see that an early goal um, but I think you know the the three games in six days always comes into my, my, my consideration when, when making that team selection Did it feel a big result we always saw the video the celebrations afterwards and stuff but just within the dressing room did it feel like there was a, a big a big shift when you, when you, you know, up against it and you fought back. Yeah, do you know what I think the biggest thing is? Um, it's, it's not so much the game, it's not so much the occasion. Um, I think we've spoke about it so often that you know we're desperate to win three points and we're desperate to piece together a win. Um, but see if you do that from not playing well and you do that from being a mile off it in games and not being competitive. I think you know I, I literally in in one hand I can tell you the number of games that I feel that we've been. Um, second best um, but I think that so often we're so competitive and the margins are so fine so I think possibly that mindset of being a goal behind and yeah what's perceived as a big game and an important game of course it is um, and what's been listen, listen let's not forget how tough this run of fixtures has been um, I think I sat here and spoke to you all about what, what that looked like I never made an excuse I, I, I relished it same as the players and I look forward to it but how we acquit ourselves at Tynecastle, how we play against Celtic, um, how we're going to acquit ourselves against Livingston. You know, everybody's sitting waiting to see if you fall down. Everybody's sitting to wait and see if uh, if they can write a story about it. Um, I, I think as much as we would like more points and as much as we would like to do better, where we've been since the turn of the year and even possibly uh, Hibs at Easter Road just before the turn of the year is that we've been incredibly competitive. There's been a lot of good minutes on the pitch for, from individuals, but from us collectively. And I think probably Probably where the emotion sometimes comes from um, is, is that you win that three points and the feeling that that brings you and I want that at this football club as well I need to stress that I think we live in a day and age where people try and act too cool and people try and act uh, in, in, in a fashion as if it doesn't mean something yeah, I can assure you that this means so much to us all uh, it really does we want the best for this football club we want three points we want to be on a run you know again the individual bits of Sam Nicholson getting his first goal for the football club Jack Vale pitching in again Blair Spittle continuing his goal of the season competition with himself um, you know th that means an awful lot to every single one of us and I think I said it to our guys after after the game um, in an interview that that passion's always there what you want to be able to do is have the opportunity at three points to sometimes express it because you know if, if, if you show false reactions to points or whatever it is then I think you're patronising people so um, it's not a show I can assure you that it's just that raw emotion from myself and, and from the players and hence why I'm probably struggling to speak a wee bit today <laughs> uh, You spoke about writing a story there but these players have the opportunity to write their own story but it's still very very tight there 
these players still, could still be looking at top six spot despite what's happened in the past. Is that just a te testament to how far this squad have come and how far they could still go? Yeah, again, I, I, I need to stress. I need to stress this, and it's far from heaping pressure on any other clubs, and it's far from asking anybody to feel sorry for me or what we have. You know, in t in terms of, I don't think we get the credit sometimes for you know for the world that we live in and where we are. Um, you know, we're unquestionably one of the lowest budgets uh, right down at the bottom end of that in, in this league um, and, and as such that doesn't mean that I look for mediocrity, it doesn't mean that I just want to try and sit in a, in a, in a position of where we budget for at this football club, uh, I, I speak about trying to raise the bar all the time, I speak about trying to get the absolute best out of players players trying to improve, players trying to um, have good individual seasons, us trying to tidy up in the bits that I'm not sitting here being false with anybody, there's aspects that we need to improve on and you know, conceding the first goal again the other night, sometimes our organisation behind the ball, which is something that we work on so hard and as I said, I felt that that was the change in the game on Wednesday night. So we acknowledge all of those things, we understand that we have to keep continuing to improve, um, but there's a lot of big clubs that spend a heck of a lot of money run about where we are in this table, in this division, so um, we had a bad spell we, we, we've ridden that out as, as as a football club but the one thing if we start to feel comfortable in ourselves and start to think that you know our, our attention span can be sort of deviated away into um, expecting to be a top six club or that we're just going to click our fingers and that we're going to be there um, yeah we've put ourselves in touch and distance to that um, it's maybe not an expectation of a lot of people and it's certainly not a thought process a lot of people have had um, but I, I, I do believe that the performances and and what we get out of the players and what they give us will determine where you finish in this league table. You know, we can start to talk about one result, we can start to talk about where we think we're going to finish. Everything comes down to performance, everything comes down to um, defending your goal and attacking the other goal. Um, I speak about reactions all the time, I speak about body language all the time. Players will be fed up hearing that. Um, but we feel we work in a really methodical, detailed way um, that we try and give the players the best chance. If we can get that right, then you can start to push the bar and you can start to raise the bar um, but you won't just get into that position without getting the other aspect right so hear a lot of managers at top clubs saying it all the time that the, the performance and the, uh, the quality you see on show and the, uh, almost that continuity of what you work on on a daily basis if you get that right generally you'll start to get performances and generally you'll start to get results um, and as such with such a bad run that we've had this season for us to be sitting in a position where you know if we have a good next five games or so until the split then who knows let's see where it goes we came up just short last year from a real bad spell um, but you know, I just want players to continue playing in the vein in the fashion that they are as well as trying to see if we can add on another 5-10% in, in small moments of the game talk about, sorry, You talk about the competitiveness that your team just had in the last couple of games does that confirm to you for when you go to Ibrox that players won't go into a shell or they won't a fear factor for the momentum that Rangers have yeah, well, uh, yeah, everything that's happened since I've been at the football club in just over a year would suggest that that we don't want your shell and that there is no fear and that we've generally had a, a really good organisation when you know that you're going into tough games. Um, that's not to say that Rangers don't have a lot of the ball. That's not to say that they don't get a lot of crosses into our box and, and, and that they don't have opportunities because we've had to ride out those moments as well. Um, but I don't sit in front of you alluding to you know, a, a horrendous show or you know that lack of confidence or, or, or belief going to the big venues and playing against the top sides in the country I don't sit here with that feeling because I, I don't really have too much evidence to suggest that we've been really competitive in these types of games last time we went to, rain, uh, to play against Rangers um, I, I spoke about it at the time uh, you know the goalkeeper gets booked for time wasting and things like that because I think that showed you their, their level of performance that day um, but I do genuinely think the Rangers are a completely different side now I sat at Ibrox last, last Saturday and I thought I thought they were outstanding, I thought they were great, they're obviously very, very confident at this minute in time, um, they've got some decent changes and rotation in their squad that they're, they're utilising at this minute in time, and quite clearly you look at the manager and he said uh, he's, he's a fantastic impact, you know, Rangers were written off how many months ago, um, and, and it was almost a procession towards Celtic winning a league title, I think was the story that was written at the time, um, but that's been turned on its head and, you know, watching them playing against what's been a, a strong heart side and a, a heart side that's been in such a good run of form they were good last week so if we face them and they hit that type of form and they got off to that type of start then it's going to be a, a real difficult game but we have to try and come up with a plan to see if we can uh, uh, write our own narrative in the game and make it really difficult for them um, but as well as that carry the threat that we've had in the, in, in the front foot 
Their three goals the other night were right out of the top drawer. They, they really are. Everyone alludes to uh, Blair Spittle's finish, but if you look at the football that's played in the lead up to the to the goals, it's it's excellent football. You don't you know you're, you're not seeing them every single week. There's a lot of scrappy goals. I'll take the scrappy goals as well, but it really does please me when you see that kind of free flowing football going towards the opposition goal. Um, and even though we go to Ibrox and even though we go against a team that's that's going well, I still have beliefs that we can have those moments in the in the game. You mentioned a couple of times about Blair Spittle scoring wonder strikes as he has done this season. Has he been spoken to about a new deal for Spurs? Yeah, I think I've said that umpteen times. Yeah, I think we've said that that we we manage these situations the best way we possibly can. Uh, I can go over old ground if you want me to go over, but we've we've spoken about it so many times. Yeah, we we want to keep our best players at the football club. We're trying to be as proactive as we possibly can be in that. Um, but the one bit that I always allude to that I think people forget is that we need all parties to uh, to, to to be in that. Um, Blair's been great. There's been a couple of conversations. Um, if we you know specify with him. He's loving his football. Um, there's been a bit of change in his life where we're having his first child and stuff like that. Um, but I thought he's, I think he's handled all of that tremendously well. But um, <laughs> how much more blatant can you make it? You're, you're looking at one of the top performers in the league, in my opinion. Again, people could shoot me down for that. Um, but of course, we want to keep him well away. That's, that goes without saying. And he's a very top scorer on that as well, which is quite impressive for him. It's so impressive. But you look at the goals that everyone probably highlights, but go and look at his performances and go and look at the assists and the, the influence that he has on our team with and without the ball. Um, it's quite remarkable. I spoke the other day about all round players, guys that can, you know, do all aspects of the game. Um, as I say, if you want to go back and have a look at a lot of it, um, then every aspect of the game at this minute in time for Blair has um, is functioning really well. And he's a player that I signed at Ross County several years ago, um, seeing loads in him, really liked his pathway coming through Queen's Park and where that's led for a lot of players. Um, but I think if you ask him, Certainly to my mind, knowing him and having worked with him for a, a right good period of time now, I think he's playing his best football.